Hey everyone, today we're going to do something quite interesting. We're going to use Comfy UI to create a real time or very, very near real time uh, drawing ability without needing to wait over and over and over again for your renders. We're going to be using the LCM, the latent consistency model for uh, helping to make this possible as well as a different node as well uh, called Canvas. Uh, all this is within the Comfy UI environment, so you don't have to go to any separate tools to, to make this happen. Um, I'm going to just quickly show you first where to go to uh, get these items. First of all, you are going to need Canvas. And so if you go in here into your manager and type in Canvas, this is the Canvas tab you're going to install. Uh, once you do that, you're going to have to restart Comfy uh, altogether, and then it'll be available. And so you can see it's kind of down here to search for it. You just type in Canvas and it'll pop there. So that's great. You're going to need that. That's going to be your drawing ability. Uh, you may have used drawing abilities before in uh, masking tools, comfy shops, etc. cetera. Uh, but this is actually almost like a little mini Photoshop, uh, very, very light Photoshop, but a mini Photoshop uh, that you can keep in your browser and it updates comfy real time as you're drawing in it. So uh, I'm going to show you basically what I did to set this up first, and then we're going to actually draw real time and I'll show you how really amazing this ability is. So first of all, normal sort of setup efficiency loader, sampler, mile high styler for my text. Um, you can keep it blank for now, add a little whatever initial prompt doesn't matter because we're going to be changing that soon. Uh, key elements to take into mind. Uh, first of all, your sampler name will be the LCM, your latent consistent model, and your LoRa name, where you're gonna have to download the LoRa if you haven't already done this with latent consistency models. Uh, it is a separate LoRa file, uh, but it is the LCM safe tensor file. Other than that, and there's separate tutorials and videos online to show you how to set up uh, LCM. But if you see a couple of the key things, first of all, you can use any of your SDXL models. Um, so that's great. Um, but here's the key. Uh, first of all, you'll see the steps is ridiculously low, right? Uh, when you look at those tutorials, they'll say typically four or five steps. Um, I've seen actually better consistency of results at eight steps. Honestly, between five and eight steps, it's not a huge difference, but from the standpoint of time, but for quality, you'll see a pretty big difference. So for now we're keeping it six steps, but you'll see as we go through this demo, uh, we'll be increasing it. Your CFG, uh, you're going to keep way low at two, otherwise you'll notice significant burnout in your images. And uh, like we said, sampler's done. Uh, you're going to use Karas. You can use normal if you want. I found um, exponential doesn't really give you really good results. Um, it tends to burn out also pretty quickly as well. Otherwise, everything else is pretty much uh, normal and the same. Same hookup across between the two. And we're also going to have almost like a, a light control net set up here as well. So a couple items here, you can have your apply control net set up. Your strength is at one. You can play with this a little bit. You'll see that there is some benefit of not having the strength all the way up. Uh, but for now, we're going to keep it at one. Uh, and you're just basically going to be uh, connecting this. You'll see your conditioning is coming directly from your positive prompt. Your positive prompt is coming from your text. So it's conditioning your text and then throwing it back into the sampler. Your control net itself is going to be sketch. Uh, if you see, you have your different items here. I found sketch works really well, actually. Um, uh, but you can really use any of your control nets if you wanted to, uh, but I found sketch works really well. So definitely use that. And finally, your image is coming down from your canvas tab. So again, you're creating a canvas tab, you're outputting the image. You could actually even create masks if you want. Uh, now let's go into what this actually does. So when you click edit, okay, as you can see, here's the window that pops up and it looks almost like, again, like almost like paintbrush with layers. I wouldn't even call it Photoshop, honestly. It's paintbrush with layers. Um, but what you'll see is as you're going along the way, you're going to be able to start drawing in your little canvas and it's going to then uh, back here in your Comfy UI environment, it will update your uh, node automatically. So as you're drawing here, it will 
update this automatically. Now, the cool thing about this whole uh, setup is your canvas tab kind of in the foreground as you are drawing, because then you'll see it automatically uh, updating your case sampler as we're going along. So, uh, so we're going to start to do a, a quick uh, example here. Uh, one final thing, though, as we start to get into drawing is over here, you have these extra options. Normally, it's not exposed. So if you check it, well, some other options come here. And you're going to want to turn on auto queue. And basically, what this does is it's going to just continuously render, continuously render. We're not actually saving any of these images. You could if you wanted to, right? You could pipe this off to a preview bridge or even off to a save node and save every single image. I would not recommend doing that because then you're literally saving, you know, potentially hundreds, if not thousands of images of just simply frame by frame by frame. Uh, no harm in doing that though, if you wanted to. Um, but for preview sake, we're uh, not gonna be saving those off. All right, here we are, we're back. Uh, all right, so here's what we're gonna do here. I'm gonna move the kind of area over here to the side and we're gonna do this over here to the side as well. And so you can see we have our drawing area here. And one thing uh, just actually before we get started, you'll see that there are actually two initial layers listed. You know, you don't want to actually mess with these that much uh, because if you change the names, it will actually not then update the node appropriately. So you'll want to be drawing on the base uh, layer. And if at any point in time you want to just kind of reset and start over, uh, don't close the window. You could if you want to, but you can just use the little X here and that will just clear out that layer but not delete the layer, right? If you don't want to delete the layer, um, but then you should be uh, all set from there. Um, okay, so we're gonna start off and we're gonna keep this very simple to say, I want a uh, orange cat in a park, okay? And we're gonna, again, stay it on our, on our auto queue and we're gonna get started here and now we're recording, right? So you can see it's starting to render, but you know it's starting to render a default image because it doesn't know any better and it's just going to continuously uh, render it, you know, a little differently. Now we're going to start to draw here. So we're going to, we want to draw a sort of cat over here on the left-hand side. We want kind of big, like so, right? Uh, and you can see right away on the left-hand side here, it automatically updates the node. And look what's starting to happen on the left-hand side. It's going to start to try to render that cat in the park. But we're also going to include a fountain. So we want the fountain to be here. And so we're going to make the fountain over here kind of spring water, like so. And I'm actually going to just do good park background bokeh. OK, so we're seeing here, look, we have our cat. And it's starting to get involved with the fountain. Uh, it's actually, if you can see, it's actually drawing the fountain on the left-hand side. Um, and so we're going to, let's say we're gonna just start over here and we're going to maybe make green here. All right, we're gonna just do a little green here over along the side here. And we're going to now create something really tall here. This could be our fountain. And as we're starting to draw, it's again taking the, the details here. Now, one thing you'll notice, you see how it kind of starts to draw it here? Uh, it's, it's actually concerning the red R, our cat. Um, one thing we'll want to do now is we want to start to increase the number of steps. So we're going to increase it to about 12. It's going to slow down the amount of generation, but it's going to add additional detail as well. You can see now we have our fountain here with the steps. We have our cat here on the on the right hand side as well. And um, let's start over. And we're, this time we're going to do a space scene. So we're going to do like a planet surface with a uh, vehicle. Okay, so we're going to do a plant surface with the vehicle. We're going to start with green here. We're going to kind of make our surface of our planet. Right, so it's it's kind of generating in the back. I'm actually going to decrease the number of seconds here to make it, or steps to make it a little faster. 
and um, one thing I want to increase, I want to create my vehicle, right? So I'm going to kind of create my vehicle here like so. Okay, so we're going to let that generate here for a second, see how that looks. You see how it's kind of copying, you can see it cop copying over here. Um, I'm going to make it a little bigger here. Okay, and then I'm also going to add a little satellite dish in the in the back, or or maybe like I'll say uh, distant uh, futuristic uh, soldiers. All right, I'm going to create these over here. Let's see how that looks here. No, oh, they're going to be flying. <laughs> so. Inside, we're going to actually just draw it all the way here. Let's see what happens. But you can see the level of flexibility you have in kind of using your creativity out there. So it has like a, a soldier kind of uh, space vessel here in the background. Uh, I'm going to increase the stepping again a little bit to slow it down, give a little more detail. We're also going to add uh let's add a uh, satellite dish satellite dish and we will do that in this kind of maroon color let's just do this like almost like a little arc okay let that render All right, and we're going to actually stop it, stop our, um, there, we'll render it one more time. Yeah, um, but you can see, right, there's a lot of quick creativity that you can add to really sort of create a customized sort of view uh, to your liking. You don't have to wait, you know, forever to see things actually render. Um, obviously, you have to play around with it. Your prompting ability is going to have a big impact also on your final results, but it's definitely something uh, to check out. Uh, it's obviously free and it's available to your comfy environment.